Good morning everyone, it's Weather United here, and in today's video, we're going to give you a detailed update on Major Hurricane Fiona as it completes extratropical transition in the next 24 hours, and then we're going to keep an eye on Tropical Depression number 9 in the Caribbean. Now, if you are new to Weather United, please consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and sharing this video with your family and friends on social media. As I did in yesterday's video, we're only going to briefly talk about major hurricane Fiona very very quickly and then much of the video we will be spending our desperate time on tropical depression number nine taking a look at the mesosector satellite imagery on hurricane Fiona and we can see that it is a very very powerful hurricane still even so there's not much of an eye left on this by any means it remains a 125 mile an hour category 3 hurricane based on the latest NHC forecast and its current intensity and there is Bermuda right there on the map as strong winds rip across that area overnight last night. A recon mission flying into Fiona this morning indicates that it remains a very, very life-threatening, powerful hurricane with 137 knot winds on the southeastern quadrant of the hurricane with winds really strong here on the recon at 113 knots. It would not be surprising if they did up the intensity back up to a category four with 130 mile an hour winds based on this wind data because this is 137 knots on the southeastern side as noted by the wind barbs coming in out of the southwesterly direction. Direction. Pressure has also dropped by a millibar down to 936 millibars. Here is the latest NHC forecast and we can see Canada is under a tropical storm warning and hurricane warning at this time as major hurricane conditions are now possible on portions there of say Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, and the Labrador in easternmost Canada, and then eventually moving into the Greenland Peninsula here as a tropical storm and a tropical depression by Sunday night into early Tuesday and Wednesday by also slowing down. But again, winds remain at 125 miles an hour, and it is moving pretty quickly off to the north-northeast at 25 miles an hour as of the 8 o'clock advisory. Now the rest of this video will be on on tropical depression number nine as it remains a big threat to the Cayman Islands, to Jamaica, to western Cuba, and even perhaps possibly still for the easternmost portion of the Yucatan Peninsula and then eventually maybe into Florida. Now taking a look at the latest mesosector satellite imagery on tropical depression number nine and we can see what the system looks like. Very deep explosive convection well removed to the western side of the system due to the northeasterly shear that's hitting it like this. And we can even see the cloud filaments moving into the system like that helping to tilt the vortex. So we we have the low level center right here rotating and then we have the mid and upper level vorticity or vortex displaced to the west and this is a very unhealthy optimal position for the system to not be able to organize or strengthen. In fact, we have a little bit of vorticity maximums that are rotating around a common center, which indicates that this is still trying to get better defined, but does meet the criteria for a tropical depression, according to the National Hurricane Center otherwise. Here is the latest National Hurricane Center on tropical depression 9, and we can see as of 5 in the morning, this is the latest track forecast. So by Saturday morning, this is where where it's going to be at. It is going to be very close to Jamaica as early as Sunday afternoon and then getting very close to the Cayman Islands as a hurricane by Monday early morning and then getting close to a major hurricane near Cuba by Tuesday morning and then getting very close to Tampa, Florida, Sarasota, Florida, perhaps getting uncomfortably close to even Miami, Florida as you are in the cone of uncertainty by Wednesday morning. Winds do remain at 35 miles an hour and and it is moving off towards the west-northwest at 13 miles an hour. Just for curious viewers that this again is very close to becoming a major hurricane in about five days as it nears Florida at 110 mile an hour winds. This could get bumped up or get bumped down based on the latest model consensus and other factors. Now when we forecast this on the GFS and some of the ensembles including our most famous two hurricane models you'll see that this does try to intensify pretty quickly 
by the end of the period here in the Caribbean, which is deemed very favorable. So we can see in the next 42 hours here where our system literally is. It is struggling to intensify with air pressure down to 1,000 millibars, so not much stronger than what it is already. So this is going to struggle to get better organized for the first couple of days. But after that, by day three, this could intensify very quickly on the latest GFS model at 973 millibars. So this would be deemed a hurricane as it gets very close to the Cayman Islands, which again, we will show you here on the HMON and the HWARF model as it's much more zoomed in. And then 947 millibars in about four days. So this is really quickly intensifying on the approach here to the Yucatan Peninsula and Western Cuba. Yes, Yucatan is here and Cuba is right there. And then by day five, on the approach to the Florida coast, it is still uncertain on how strong this could actually get in the Gulf of Mexico. There are some signals this could be at 930 millibars. There is some models that have this even at 970 millibars in the Gulf. So we just don't know exactly how strong this is going to get. But nevertheless, we have something we have a system on our hands to really worry about if you're on the florida coast with moderate to heavy rainfall storm surge flooding damaging winds that sort of deal as this tries to get better organized and then it does fall apart as it moves right over florida bringing some very intense flooding rains and strong winds and then that falls apart now notice how again I didn't go that far out because again, this is very uncertain forecast. If we just take a look at the previous GFS model run, you can see how this is moving all around. This is one, two model runs ago, three model runs ago, four model runs ago, five model runs. So you can just see already how this is rapidly shifted eastward it could shift back easily it wouldn't surprise me but we probably have a better set in stone forecast that it's going to be impacting somewhere here in the florida coast probably in the next five or seven days this forecast is pretty reliable on the latest gefs or the global ensemble forecasting system this is um, putting down three things on the map this is showing you vorticity with the colors we have the height lines here in blue and we have the upper level winds here with the wind barbs at 200 millibars so three and one on the map in other words to better analyze with what is going to be going on so take a look here um, at the gefs once again in 24 hours we can see there is tropical depression number nine easterly winds here do back off a little bit in the 24 hour period based on this forecast and then by say day two winds really fall apart look at this more of a northerly flow aloft here and the system may even dig a little further south so the shear might back off quite a bit at this time as it gets underneath the favorable conditions we get this anti-cyclone that does something like this and it's able to breathe and exhaust that air out so when you get air pulling in on the bottom of the system it wants to uh, rise in the middle where the eye is and then kind of evenly distribute its outflow and that's a healthy system for it to intensify so by day two, we have a strengthening tropical storm or hurricane on this model with the very light to no wind shear values. Shear values that could even get down below five knots for a couple of days. And then approaching Western Cuba on the ensemble forecast in about five days, or actually in about four to five days, that is. And then approaching near the Florida coast here by day five. But take note, there's a lot of spread here. These are individual systems. So we have some of the members indicating that it may hit the Yucatan, some members over here. Uh, but most of the members, a cloud, we should say, is right there in the southeastern portion of the Gulf of Mexico by Wednesday morning, September the 28th, as it interacts with this trough to the north, 
We got a ridge over here to the east. We have another ridge in the mid-levels over here to the west. The European Ensemble is a whole lot different than the GFS, which it has been for quite some time. So this is the EPS or the Ensemble Prediction System ran by the control run of the European model. And we can see there is Tropical Depression 9, like we said. We're gonna go through this fairly quickly. So I'm not taking up a lot of your time. So 48 hours out by the weekend, we can see that the system is underneath lesser shear here on the European model, to be quite honest. Not as strong on the easterly flow aloft, but there's still a little bit of shear here nonetheless. So going out to three days, the shear really backs off because, again, we have this anti-cyclone over the system that does something like that. So you get outflow in all quadrants and you get the approaching trough to the north. You got the ridge over here to the east and you got another ridge. So the shear really does back off dramatically by day three. Day four, it approaches Western Cuba on the ensemble forecast and then approaching by day five in portions of Southern Florida. But take note, there's a pretty big um, definition, uh, what is the word that I'm looking for? Um, there's a pretty big difluent forecast here with the GFS ensembles a little further to the west still than the European model that is still a little further to the east. We will have to wait for the next complete operational run that comes out at 12Z, which will be released fully at about noon my time. That's Pacific time. Now, the only bullish portion of this forecast is coming off from the HWARF and the HMON model, which unfortunately are our two most accurate, reliable hurricane models that are ran. And so this is showing you a potential worst case scenario. I want to make that clear to you all that are watching this video that these two models are definitely bullish. So let's kind of roll through this so you all can see with how this is going to play out. So 48 hours out, we have a tropical storm potentially. Pressure is down to 1,003 millibars. And notice how I fast forward this because really no strengthening is anticipated at least through the next couple of days. By day two and a half, this is right where Jamaica is, by the way. So if we go back, you can see the whole landmass almost of Jamaica as this is going to be passing hopefully far enough south where Jamaica does not get significantly impacted, but you could still see some gusty winds and some heavy rainfall nonetheless. Pressure's down 997 millibars, but it's after it passes Jamaica and gets still uncomfortably close to the Cayman Islands as you see here. See these islands? That's an indication that the system is going to be really close to some population areas with tropical storm force winds on the westernmost portion of the Cayman Islands with tropical storm. And then, of course, you got hurricane force winds off the coast of the Cayman Islands. But look at that, 976 millibars on the H wharf. Now this model in particular does not show explosive rapid intensification, but it still indicates that we are going to see intensification occur beyond day two. So by day um, three and a half, approaching the Western Cuba area, perhaps even day four, 957 millibars, hurricane force winds perhaps on the western tip there of Cuba. And then as soon as it gets into the Gulf of Mexico, some strengthening is anticipated with possibly a major hurricane. But again, uh, that's going a little too on the far end of side, folks. So again, worst case scenario is this could become a major hurricane. But you'll see on my intensity forecast that I totally disagree with this for the time being until, again, we get more consensus and consistency among the models that this could actually be a possibility. So on the HMON model, we can see how this all evolves. So 54 hours out, we have, again, tropical storm force winds. The system is a little deeper initially on this portion, 999 millibars. And then you can see Jamaica is not even on the map, nor is the Cayman Islands. Only the westernmost portion of the islands is right there. So this would likely or possibly miss the Cayman Islands if this were ordered to happen, which is still possible. 
because of what it is on the model. This is kind of the what if situation. What if it's further west? Then it avoids Jamaica and the Cayman Islands. But please do not cancel your plans or do not cancel your preparations, I should say. Do not be like, oh, it's not going to hit me. I'm fine. Okay, because again, you still have the global models that still indicate that it could still impact your area. Okay, this is just one of the two models or several models that we're using. So it also misses Cuba, not entirely, but at least with the hurricane force winds, you get tropical storm force winds instead on Western Cuba by about day four. Now look at this, by day five, perhaps we could have a strengthening hurricane. This could be a very big problem if this were to happen. So we got the HMON and HWARF that both agree on a major hurricane, possibly in the next five days. And it doesn't surprise me if the NHC does push this up to about 115 miles an hour in their next update or their next product advisory, their next complete one here in about 45 minutes. So how strong could tropical depression number nine actually get? Well, again, it is still a little uncertain, but we have a pretty good idea now with all the tight clustering that is going on here in the first three days that there will be some strengthening that does occur possibly beyond 48 hours, as you can see here, beyond 72 hours we could see possibly a category one hurricane. And then by day five, a little bit of a more spread here with the two hurricane models that we just looked at indicating a mid and high grade category four hurricane with most of the models down here in the category two to category three range. So we'll have to really watch this portion of the forecast to exactly see how strong this is gonna get. So for the time being, I am being very generous and conservative with my forecast, and I am only indicating that this is going to become a Category 1 hurricane with winds that are going to probably be about 75 miles an hour. I have risen it from the previous one, but I am still on the low end because of how uncertain this forecast kind of remains because of the shear. But we're getting a better idea that this could now become a possible or likelihood to become a hurricane in about four or three days. The track forecast has not changed much from yesterday afternoon's video. As you can see here, most of the guidance does indicate Western Cuba is still at risk for getting a landfall. Again, this does not to be taken very seriously at all because again, this could change substantially. We could see a trend back towards the west or back towards the east again. So again, just take this with a grain of salt that individual tracks here are a what if scenario based on the current conditions, right? But overall, the guidance is in this general favor right now for Western Cuba and even now possibly for Central and even Southern Florida. So keep that in mind when you see the spaghetti plot. So now that we talked about tropical depression number nine, please keep your preparations in plan because again, we could be looking at a tropical storm or hurricane in the next few days while also keeping an eye on Major Hurricane Fiona as it heads towards Canada. If you found this weather information very helpful, make sure you smash the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future updates. But anyways, I will see you in the next one. Peace!